If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube. Links in the description. Righto then. Well, today I got this, a pine tab, as you might be able to tell from the video title. Now, you might be wondering, how exactly have you got a pine tab? Aren't they out of production at the moment? Well, that is true, but I actually bought mine off a guy on the Pine64 forum. So if you want a Pine64 device, but they're currently out of production, make sure you check the forums and the Reddit, because very often people will sell these devices like new, often at a greatly discounted counted price if not giving them away. So if you want one of these devices definitely check the forms and the reddit page and all that sort of place. So with that said let's go ahead and unbox our Pine tab. So it comes in this unassuming brown box which one of the many ways that Pine64 save money to deliver a cheaper product is that they save money on packaging which I have no complaints there because this probably goes in the bin anyway. So with that said inside the brown box you get a white box. So let's go ahead and move this white box to the side for a second and inside the brown box we have this a welcome page so it gives you a few basic things now this pine tab is a similar idea to the pine phone so i doubt that i'll need this but this could be helpful for someone and there's also packaging materials in there so next let's go ahead and grab our white box which is where the pine tab lives and let's go ahead and unbox this so if we take this off you can see the pine tab itself. So if we go ahead and pick this up and move it to the side and have a look at what else is in the box. So if we lift this flap up, you can see we have the keyboard case, which I would highly recommend getting if you do get a pine tab. But we'll have a look at that more when the pine tab's actually in the case. And you also get our charging cable, which is, this is one of the few things that annoys me greatly about the Pine tab. They didn't put USB-C or micro USB or anything on it. It uses its own proprietary cable, which might be a bit of a pain to replace if it breaks. If there's ever a Pine tab 2 or a Pine tab revision, I would really like to see a more standard charging cable on it, but no big deal, I suppose. So with that said, let's take a look at the Pine tab itself. So it comes in this rather nice sleeve type thing. And I'm gonna try not to do an accidental face reveal with this Pine tab screen because it is very, very reflective. If I ever wanna do a face reveal, I should hope that my hair is actually not a mess like it is now. So as you can see, we have the Pine tab here. You've got your keyboard connection port at the bottom. On the sides, you've got your charging port, your headphone jack, a full-sized USB port, very useful, a micro HDMI port, so you will need an adapter for that for most things, and a micro USB port, which isn't for charging, but you can connect things to it, which, fair enough, but I do wish that that was for charging. On the back, this thing is completely unbranded, and I believe you can actually take the back off to replace the battery, which, fantastic. And on the other side, we've got nothing. And actually, inside the device, the specs are a all-winner A64 quad core SOC with a Mali 400 MP2 GPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM, a 720p LCD touchscreen, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, a 2 megapixel front facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera, a slot to install an M2 drive, as well as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0 and a 6000 milliamp hour battery. So all in all performance isn't fantastic but for the price, it's certainly very impressive. So with that said, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. So if we just turn on the power button here, I do know that this has Ubuntu Touch on it already, which fantastic. Oh, and also I forgot to mention there's a front and a back camera, but those don't work in some operating systems just yet. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And like I say, it does work. The build of Ubuntu Touch that comes with it, I did update it and it's still a little bit iffy, but I do have a very specific idea in mind of what I want to use this device for. And it certainly isn't Ubuntu Touch for as much as I do like Ubuntu Touch. So while that boots, let's go ahead and connect the keyboard to it so you can go ahead and see that. Now this is the keyboard here. It's very, very well built. And if we just go ahead and open this up, you can see that you've got your full keyboard here, really nice. You've got the little bit where it connects and this thing actually closes magnetically, which is quite cool. So let's go ahead and get the tablet itself while it boots up and let's go ahead and connect it, which that's actually gonna be difficult with the limited space that we have, but I'm gonna try my best here. And as you can see, it connects and yeah, it works like a tablet. So we've got our keyboard down here which it's actually not bad. I was expecting the keyboard to be a little bit iffy. It's also backlit, which is quite cool. You could definitely sit and type on this. This isn't a junk keyboard by any stretch of the imagination. And as you can see, we've got Ubuntu Touch on here and it's actually a fairly nice screen. The colors are decent. The resolution seems to be decent. So it's just all around a cool device. It's got a little Pine64 logo down there. The only thing is the touchpad is a little bit iffy and it doesn't seem to work correctly in Ubuntu Touch. So you can only get so far across the screen with it, which is 
is a little bit annoying. Touchscreen works fine. I don't think the graphics is accelerated yet properly, so it's a little bit slow, but generally speaking, it seems to work, and I'm sure in a few updates time, it will be fine. So yeah, that's the Pine tab. What I want to do is probably stick Mobium with a more desktop-centric desktop on it, but... Well, I've got a quick update to that. Turn I didn't actually decide to use Mobian with a desktop-centric desktop environment at all. Instead, I actually went with Arch with Fosh. Now, the reason for that is Arch seems to perform much, much better than Mobian. And I suspect the reason for that is that the graphics drivers that are on Arch are more up-to-date than the ones that are on Mobian. So as a result, performance is much better. I can actually play back 1080p video and just all sorts of other things that make Arch much better. And now this bit of the video you're watching right now was actually recorded on the Pine tab itself because it has a full USB port which my mic can fit into. It's relatively fast so it can record video although there might be a little bit of a lag here and there. And all in all you can in fact screen record on a Pine tab and you can do numerous other things with it as well. So for instance as you can see now I'm browsing the web in Angelfish. And when I'm not screen recording, that's actually pretty fast on anything but the most demanding of websites. So for checking the news or some other basic web tasks, this will be absolutely fine. I was able to write a video script in LibreOffice and that worked absolutely fine too. And I was also able to browse Mastodon with Tootle. And I suspect that actually you could probably browse the web version using Angelfish. And I've just generally been able to do a lot of the tasks you would expect out of a small laptop or tablet. Now, it struggles a little bit with heavier web browsers on heavier websites, as you would expect, but many of the programs and things that I want to do on my desktop or laptop can in fact be done here. So you can see that I've got a variety of programs installed, and a small number of these programs don't actually work on the Pine tab, but a lot of them do. So I've already explored some of the like, main things that I've been doing in the day since I got my Pine tab, but there's also other things that do seem to work as well. So for instance, I was able to do a bit of light gaming with Extreme Tux Racer. You have to run it at low settings, but it is playable, which is cool. I was able to run Feed Reader to check my RSS feeds, which is something you would expect to work. I've been able to use Document Viewer to read books, which is a huge usage for tablet. I've even been able to use Firefox to do a little bit of light browsing, but I find that Angelfish is better. I've been able to use KeyPass XC to use all of my passwords on here, which is really nice to have on this device. I've been able to do Krita for a bit of light image work, which I wouldn't expect that you can do much of anything with it. I wouldn't even want to make my thumbnails in it. But if you've got some photos that just need touching up a little bit, I'm sure that'll be fine. Interestingly, I've installed Lagrange, which is a browser for Gemini, and that works perfectly, and I must say I'm really really impressed that I've got a tablet that I can browse Gemini on. And there's a few other things that I've not tried yet that should also work. So for instance, I've got stuff like Lollipop, Gnome Maps, that sort of thing. Those seem like they would work. I've opened up NeoChat and Telegram and all that sort of thing, and I've had several chats going on with various different people across various different platforms. And the Pine tab has worked absolutely fine for that, even when I move on to other programs and stuff while it's still open. So the Pine tab really doesn't struggle much with basic tasks, which is really, really cool. So all in all, I've got to say, for my first impressions of the Pine tab software experience, it's seriously impressive. But with that said, let's continue with the main video. At some point, this is going to be a really, really nice tablet if you don't consider it to be one already. So with that said, that's my unboxing of the Pine tab. Expect more Pine tab videos in the future because I really really like this thing so far and just one last thing before i go as well i should probably point out that you can actually use this as a little laptop because those fold together and you can rest it on them and you can actually rest it on your lap it's a little bit wobbly but it does work but if you've got like a desk or something this will be an absolutely fine laptop replacement for basic things but with that said that actually is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed watching it expect more videos in the future and i will see you in the next video